got louder and closer. It almost sounded like it was in the room with me now and all around me, so I decided to go up front to my living room as I was feeling uneasy. It almost sounded like it was in the room with me now and all around me, so I decided to go up front to my living room as I was feeling uneasy and a little freaked out. The TV was on a music channel and I grabbed the remote and turned it down and laid it on the counter face up while I went to grab a drink out of the refrigerator. I could hear behind me the sound of the TV getting louder and when I turned around the volume on the screen was going up all while I was looking at the remote right where I left it facing upwards with no one touching it. I grabbed the remote and tried turning it down but as the volume would go down as I pushed the button, the volume would still go back up on its own, even as I was holding the button down. That has never happened before with the remote or my television. I finally got the volume down, and I flipped through the channels to find something to take my mind off of what just happened. I'll be lying if I said I didn't feel like I was being watched the whole time by something. I finally got the courage to go back to my room after a while while the energy felt more at ease. I recall once I went into my bedroom to change clothes when I could hear growling noises coming from inside my closet. I felt the same exact energy both times with these two different experiences. I'm out of town now and haven't been home for a bit, but I hope when I go back, nothing like any of that happens again. That's very scary. But yeah, I hope whatever that was, was nothing, or that it's gone now. Thanks, Damien. So if you would um, like to share your own stories and volunteer for let me read them on my channel. You can email them to jakesymbolasmr at gmail.com. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just, um, you know, if, it, if it's a spooky occurrence that happened to you, I love to share. Uh, just send me the name you'd like me to use, and if you'd like a social media link, for one of your social media if you want. Okay, now I'm going to get into the true scary stories of Let's Not Meet. These are some of the most popular stories on the subreddit. If you are into the Let's Not Meet subreddit, you have probably read them. So if you are, I hope that um, enjoy hearing them in my whisper, and uh, maybe you'll be less scared this time because you already know what's going to happen. The first story I'm going to read is absolute nightmare fuel. I think about this story a lot. Like, holy crap, I'm so happy this person survived. It's called, What Was She Planning To Do To Me? And it's by user Kenny C5576. One time I went to the bar with one of my friends. I had just turned 21, so I hadn't been to much bars up to that point. My friend was drinking on the way to the bar, so he was already pretty drunk when we got there. When I sat at the bar, a cute girl came and talked to me and my friend. She said her name was Candace, and I noticed she had really, really bright red hair. I assumed she dyed it. It was pretty, but unnatural. Anyways, this girl was flirting with me and my friend. She could tell my friend was already very drunk. To be honest, I played along like I was drunk already too, because it seemed 
seemed to be working for my friend. I didn't know if she was just trying to get free drinks, so I told her we didn't have much money. She offered to buy us drinks. She kept buying us drinks, and I started to get confused as to who she liked between me and my friend. My friend went to the bathroom. Before he came back, he was kicked out by the bouncers. He was too drunk. Candace and I went outside with him. She kept telling him to go home with her. He was so out of it he could barely answer. I told her he was too drunk and that I couldn't let him go anywhere. I didn't want him to wake up hungover in some random house with no car and no idea what happened. Candace kept pushing it, saying that she would take care of him, but I told her no, because I had to stay with him. I was more sober than him. He was my responsibility. I told her the only way he was going anywhere was if I tagged along. I assumed she thought that I was jealous or cock-blocking, but my friend could barely stand and lost interest in Candace already at that point. She immediately started flirting with me and offered to get my friend a taxi to drive him home and said we could go to her place alone. At this point, I had a few drinks and I was pretty buzzed, so I agreed. We took my friend to the taxi and walked to her car. I slightly stumbled on the way to her car. Wow, you're pretty drunk, huh? She said, smiling, as she held onto my arm. Yeah, I said. I don't know why, but I just felt slightly shy and anxious. Everything was just happening too easy for me, so I felt uneasy. We got in her car, and we drove down the street. Want to stop at the liquor store and get some more to drink? I'll buy it, so don't worry about paying, she offered. I didn't want to drink any more than I already did. I was already buzzed and wanted to be able to carry myself throughout the rest of the night. Sometimes I made myself look stupid when I'm drunk, so I didn't want to ruin anything with Candace more than I already did earlier with telling her my friend was too drunk. I told her I was already drunk enough, but she insisted. I didn't want to seem lame, so I told her to get me a pint of liquor with some apple juice to chase it. She went in the store and came out with a lot more than just a pint. I assumed she wanted to drink more, and that's why she got a fifth instead of a pint. On the car ride, we passed the bottle back and forth, but she took tiny sips. I tried to take tiny sips, but she kept passing me the bottle and telling me to drink. I somehow managed to drink all of my apple juice and pretend to drink the bottle by spitting the liquor in the apple juice bottle. I tossed the apple juice bottle full of liquor out the window before she saw it. I didn't want her to know I was acting drunker than I was. She actually believed I was sloppy drunk when I was simply buzzed. I took a couple more sips of liquor and finished the bottle. Throughout the car ride, I called her the wrong name a couple of times just to get a reaction out of her. She didn't react to it. She just kept letting me call her Carla without correcting me. For some reason, I thought she lied to me about her name initially. We drove up to her house. I pretended to trip and stumble into her front door. She helped me walk inside by holding me up. She opened her front door, which was unlocked. We walked in her house. She closed her front door and then locked it. I thought that was strange, but assumed she didn't want anyone walking in on us. I told her that I had to use the bathroom. I walked into her bathroom, locked the door, and looked in the mirror. I 
just felt strange. I felt like something was off. I felt myself becoming more drunk from finishing the bottle earlier. I turned on the sink to make noise and made myself puke up the liquor I drank. I flushed and went to the sink and started drinking the tap water out of my hands to sober up. I just didn't want to be drunk. I still wanted to hook up with Candace, so I wanted to pretend to be drunk. I turned the sink off and I could hear her talking to someone. He's drunk as hell. He can barely stand up. You do it. Who is she talking to? And do what? out of the bathroom and into the living room. The moment I stepped into the living room, I saw her walking into another room. All I could see was the back of her head. That strange, very bright red hair. Go into another room. I didn't see her face or anything. I just saw her kind of walk fast into the room. The living room was pretty dark. Hey, where are you going? I slurred, like I was drunk. She walked back into the dark living room and up to me. Let's go into my room, she said. I looked at her bright red hair and then into her eyes. They were different. Her face was different. It was another girl with the same hair. That's when I realized it was another girl with the same wig on. It was a wig the whole time. She had changed it with the girl from earlier, for whatever reason. My heart felt like it stopped. But I tried to look like I had no idea it was a different girl. I kind of smiled at her and told her I just needed to use the bathroom one more time. And told her sorry I was so drunk. She said, it's fine, just hurry up in there. I went into the bathroom and locked the door. I heard her whisper something to someone again this time. I think I heard a male voice whisper back. I honestly didn't concentrate on listening to exactly what she said. Something sketchy was going on, and I had to get out of that house. I opened the bathroom window and jumped straight out of it, and ran faster than I've ever ran in my life. I didn't look behind myself or anything. I just ran through the backyard, jumped the fence ran through someone else's backyard, hit a road, and ran toward the main road. I kept running down the main road until I saw a star CVS. I ran into the CVS and stood straight at the front of the store, in front of the camera. I called a taxi and went home. I try to think what happened that night. What was she or they planning that night? Why did she tell me a fake name? Why was she trying to get my friend and I so drunk? I thought maybe a robbery, but she kept spending money on us. 
she kept, buying us drinks, and even paid for my friend's taxi cab. And mostly, why did she wear a wig that she gave to another girl to wear? Who was she talking to? What did it mean? And what was in that room they tried to lure me into? Edit. The next day after this incident, I went back to the house with a couple of friends to see just what was going on. Nobody was there. No cars, no people, nothing. Just an empty house. I ended up finding out that the house was a summer rental. And whoever those people were, they broke into that house and used it for only that night and never came back. That story is so scary, scary beyond any paranormal thing someone could make up. Um, there, in the comments, there are a lot of pretty interesting speculations, educated speculations about what it could have been, and I am not going to read those to you because there's a line between me spooking you out and me giving you straight up nightmares, but if you're curious, the link is in the description. The next story is a classic on the subreddit. It is called, My Brother Saw a Ghost as a Kid. Two decades later, I realized what he actually saw. I was about seven years old. My brother about ten. It was well past our bedtime when our mom woke up off the couch to put us to bed. Our dad worked construction out of town back then, so it was often just us three at the house for weeks at a time up the stairs and to the immediate right was our parents' bedroom. Going left puts you in the middle of a hallway. Taking another left down that hallway led to my brother's room. The opposite end was my room, which was also across the hall from our upstairs bathroom. At either end of the hallway are windowed doors we always kept locked and rarely used. The door on my end led to a balcony overlooking our front yard, and the door on my brother's end opened to our back porch. The house kind of leans into a small hill. My brother and mom both had a habit of waking up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. I only knew this because I was always a light sleeper, and they just couldn't help flushing with the door wide open. This night, however, my brother stopped on his way to his room and came back towards the bathroom. I'm gonna try to pee before I go to bed, he said. The past few nights I've been too afraid to walk to the bathroom. I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. I don't know if my mom wrote it off as my brother telling ghost stories to try to scare me, or if she was already half asleep and didn't catch it, but she didn't react at all to my brother's confession. I, on the other hand, was terrified by it. The fear of seeing a ghost like that at the end of the hallway or through the windows is the reason I started running from the stairs to my bedroom at night. Years later, when I was about 18, my mom and I were having a conversation. 
information in her car about a talk we had for a very short time when I was little. We were sharing stories about Max's tendency toward destroying my shoes and other unruly behaviors. When my mom blurted out, Do you remember that time I opened the front door for the cops and Max ran inside to the kitchen and started tearing open that big bag of dog food we had? This really caught me by surprise because in all the years I had lived in that house, we never once called the cops. We were a gun owner family in a quiet, rural West Virginia neighborhood. I asked her what she was talking about, and she looked equally surprised, as if she had just revealed something by accident. Oh, that's right. I never told you because you were too young at the time. One night, I woke up hearing noises outside my window, and when I looked, I saw a man staring into my bedroom. She went on to describe how turning on the lights caused him to take off running, and how she grabbed my dad's pistol before calling the cops. I can't remember all the details I gave them when they showed up. Tall, white male, wearing a striped shirt and jeans. Short, dark hair. Something like that. They said it matched the description of a man they were looking for in the area. It turns out he had escaped from jail on a murder charge. Now, I know it sounds so obvious hearing those two stories back to back, but it wasn't until a few years ago, in my mid-twenties, that I pieced together that my brother had unknowingly warned us about a murderer who spent multiple nights gazing our home. What unnerves me so much about that is um, that for some reason, I don't know, when I was a kid I was always creeped out by like little descriptions. I'm getting chills right now. Um, like for example, a man in stripes is so specific and if I were a kid hearing that, I would be freaked out. Like. It's just specific. <sighs> Next story is called He asked for me by name. Yes. Call 911. I've never seen him in my life. By user ligamentary. I was watching my daughter's kids while she and her husband go out of town. They have a teenage daughter. Let's say her name is Alyssa. At like 3 a.m. I'm woken up by a weird rustling sound and look out the window to see movement. I saw a boy emerge from the bushes on the side of the house. I saw a bike tossed on the lawn that definitely wasn't ours. My first thought was it was a burglar gazing houses. But since he looked young and came through on a bike, I figured scaring him straight would be enough for him to decide to head home. Didn't want to ruin a teenager's life by calling the cops straight away. So I went out on the porch, flipped the lights on, and said, Can I help you? In my classroom voice. The guy looked surprised, but not nervous. He was wearing a Letterman-style jacket. But one 
once I got a clear view of him in the street lights, he seemed much older than my granddaughter, rough, and more wiry than athletic. He walked up closer to the house and said, yeah, I'm looking for Alyssa. I gave him a disapproving glare, hoping he'd realize he came looking for a girl late at night, and a grumpy old person answered, it's time to split. I'm thinking what must have happened as Alyssa knew her parents were going out of town, and maybe before she knew I'd be staying over, told a secret boyfriend to come over. It was late. I was alone with several kids, so I didn't want him coming any closer to the house. I also thought it was weird he came so late and wanted to be sure Alyssa actually wanted to talk to him. So I said, I'm sorry, who? And he said, Alyssa. You know, Alyssa last name. This is her house. I thought he knew her full name. They must at least be friends. I said, you wait there. He started to walk up, and I felt a sick burning in my gut. Instinct kicked in. I yelled, no, stop, freeze. Then readjusted and said, you stay right there. This is private property, don't take a step closer. Wait there. So I go in and Alyssa is asleep just one room over from where the rustling first occurred. And I wake her up and say something to the effect of, I don't know what the big idea was to have friends over this time of night, but you tell them to go home. She has no clue what I'm talking about. I say, there's a guy outside asking for you. Confused, she gets up and goes to the window. She sees him and goes white as a sheet. He asked for me. Yeah. By name. Yes. Call the police. I've never seen him in my life. I called 911 immediately, but as I was on the phone with them, Alyssa started talking in my arm. He's coming up, she said. I had younger kids in the house to think about, so I kept the door latched and pulled it just enough for me. Pulled it just enough for the latch and yelled. I asked my husband and none of us know an Alyssa last name. Leave my property or I'm calling 911. He got angry and started yelling for her to come out. Thankfully, the police came pretty quickly, and when he heard the sirens, he grabbed the bike and ran off. I watched where he was running, and he jumped into the passenger side of a car without headlights or front plates and sped off. followed in the same direction once I pointed them, but they didn't get him. They advised us to take all her social media details offline if she was sure she didn't know this person, and said they'd had a couple similar reports recently and were looking into it. I got a heavy-duty lock, and she slept in my room for the remainder of my visit. That one the wow, he got into a car. <sighs> it's so scary. When I when I read that I think about like I would be afraid of looking out the window in case he saw me and just how close things were. Scary. Okay, this next one is absolutely I one of the 
scariest to me and just one of the most intense and I don't know this is another one like the first one that just like I think back to it and I'm like dang it's called someone broke into my house and tried to find me by a staring void a few years ago I was renting a house in Northern California. The neighborhood was just outside the suburbs. It seemed like the perfect balance of having space and having nice neighbors close enough not to feel isolated. The area had no street lights, so it was very dark at night, especially if there were clouds blocking the moonlight. It didn't bother me though. It made my little house feel even more quaint on dark nights. I got home from work one day in midwinter. It was a cloudy night, so pulling up to my house, I saw only what my headlights and front porch light illuminated. When I got out of my car, I got a whiff of cigarette smoke. That was odd, as I had never smelled that before around that house. I didn't see anyone nearby, so I ignored it and went inside. I had just got off a shift with a few hours of overtime, so I felt pretty tired. Even though it wasn't even seven yet, I decided to take a shower and call it a night. I woke up sometime later sure that I'd heard a noise inside my house. I wasn't worried right away because my friend would sometimes stop by to use my shower after work on his way to his night classes. I even gave him a spare key so he could stop by even if I wasn't home. He would always text me to let me know beforehand though, and I hadn't heard my phone go off. I reached over to my bedside table and picked up my cell phone to see if my friend had sent me a text. The bright light from my phone screen and number pad blinded these were the days before phones had a light sensor that would dim the screen in the dark. And this particular phone was so bright I could use it as a flashlight. Through squinted eyes, I could make out that it was nine something. But I couldn't tell if I had an unread text or not. I set my phone aside and called out my friend's name. There were a couple of seconds of silence before I heard loud footfalls and as someone started running through the bottom floor of my house. I leapt out of bed and ran to the closet. They were already up the stairs by the time I had opened the door and stepped inside. That house had three rooms upstairs, two bedrooms on either side of the hallway, the one I was in, and a spare, and a bathroom at the end. The bedroom doors were both closed, but the bathroom door was cracked open. I heard whoever was in my house thunder down the hallway past my door into the bathroom. Thank God he did. That gave me enough time to open the attic access in the ceiling of my closet and hoist myself up. I had just started to lift myself up when the person ran back out of the bathroom. My feet were barely inside of the attic when my bedroom door burst open. I heard footsteps run into my room and stop when they didn't see me in that room. They ran back to the hallway and into the other room, which just had box 
boxes stacked in a corner, some weights, and a table where I painted my miniature models. I guess they decided that if someone were hiding, it would be in the bedroom because they charged back into my room and turned on the light. A moment later, the closet door was ripped open. I was crouched in my attic just a foot or so away from the access, so I could try to stop them if they started to climb up. From my vantage point, all I could see was from about their knee down. They were wearing dirty blue jeans with frayed cuffs and worn work boots. After a few seconds of looking in the closet, they stepped away and I heard a loud crash come from my room, followed by a scream of frustration and anger. That scream was the most unnerving part of the incident for me. It reminded me far too much of my stepfather who would scream in a similar way when he lost his temper. He would eventually be put in a mental hospital for several mental disorders that resulted in erratic and violent tendencies. The man in my house ran back down the stairs. I heard crashes and clatters as things were thrown around, and furniture was knocked over. I stayed crouched in the attic. I had left my cell phone when I ran for the closet, and I wasn't certain I could climb down without him hearing. After some time, the noises stopped. I started counting slowly. When I reached a thousand, I decided it was safe enough to climb down and call the police. The first thing I noticed when I exited the closet was the intruder had flipped my bed over. I assume in an attempt find me. That was the loud noise I had heard after he stepped away from the closet. I couldn't find my cell phone, so I went to the landline by the bed and called the police. I waited in my room until I heard them call out from downstairs. The first floor was a mess. I had expected that. Chairs had been knocked over, the sofa had been flipped, all the books, pictures, and knickknacks I had on my shelves were strewn across the floor. The cupboards in the kitchen had been opened, and all the boxed and canned foods had been thrown to the ground. As far as I could tell, though, the only thing missing was a single knife out of the wooden block in my kitchen. The police checked my house from top to bottom. They found that the side door had been forced open by something like a crowbar. They also found a few cigarette butts along my fence line, along with some foil and an empty pen tube, which the police said people often use to smoke meth. So they think he had been watching my house for a while. I realized that he must have been out there smoking a cigarette when I got home. They collected up the evidence and told me I should stay with family or friends that night and get that door fixed as soon as possible. I opted to just not sleep. I moved a shelf over to block the broken door and spent the next couple hours cleaning things up. I would often go to the window with a flashlight and shine it along the fence line where the police found the cigarette butts and foil, but I didn't see anything. The next day I called to have the door fixed and motion lights installed in the back and sides of my house. 